Hello friends, how are you doing today? I hope that you guys are all having an amazing week. Happy Friday and let's have a great weekend. I hope that we do. I hope everyone's Valentine's Day was not sufferable. I'm so pumped because after I film this video, I'm going to go and watch the episodes of Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer that I need to catch up on and I'm very excited about it. Not that this video isn't a good thing as well, but Attack on Titan is just definitely better. To all of my returning subscribers that are here watching this video, it's good to see you, Diarrhea. As always, I missed you and I love you so much. Thank you for being here. And if you do not know who I am, hello, nice to meet you. My name is Paige Legal. I'm an autistic human being and so over here we talk about autism and stuff. If you are not doing so already, feel free to go check out and follow my TikTok at Paige Legal. And while you're at it, you can follow my Instagram with the same name. I must admit, I have been slacking on posting TikToks for a while. I get into like these grooves of I like TikTok and I'm gonna post a lot of things and then I'm like triggered trauma place not a fan stay away I had to hide the app because it gives me anxiety <laughs> but this right here this platform this is where I'm posting regularly cool so if you like me you like my content I would love for you to click the subscribe button down below and you can turn on the little notification bell to get notified when I post new videos which happens to be mostly every Friday I have the understanding that there was a, a bowl that was quite super recently. Did I attend the festivities? No. I know two things about football. I know that the Peyton guy's forehead keeps getting bigger, and I know that you pass the ball forward and not backward, unlike rugby. Did you guys watch it? Did you enjoy the outcome? Was it one that you were anticipating? One thing that I know about the Super Bowl, this year Eminem performed at the halftime show. I'm not a huge rap fan in general. I know like, you know, a good three or four Eminem songs. I get told that I look like his daughter sometimes. One thing that I did not know until today, which honestly is quite embarrassing to say. I'm sure that y'all probably already know this, but if you didn't, Eminem is autistic. Yeah. He's talked about his different way of thinking and how he was bullied as a child and all of the things that went on in various interviews and stuff. But even in one of his songs, he talks about Asperger's. And the more I look into Eminem and dive into his songs, I can totally see it. <laughs> but it made me think like, dang, I need to find out who's autistic. And you know, in this day and age, a lot of people can be diagnosed with autism, which is fabulous. But I got quite intrigued at looking into the records of famous people who are no longer alive. And most of which died before an autism diagnosis was even a thing. And speculating myself and also seeing other people's speculations on how these people were likely autistic. So I wanted to share them with you. All of these people are so influential on the world and how human beings have evolved. It's quite amazing to think that all of these people would be autistic and how autistic people have really shaped the way that the world is. That we would not be as nearly advanced in our knowledge and our science and our technology as we are today if it weren't for autistic people. I mean, one example of an alive human being today that is very smart with an autism diagnosis is Elon Musk, if you guys weren't aware. Elon Musk has been speculated to be autistic forever, but he came out on SNL and said, I'm the first SNL host with Asperger's. And I watched that and I said, no, not the no that you're not autistic. Like you're probably autistic, but Dan Aykroyd was the first host on SNL with Asperger's. So I wanted to share with you my list of famous people who probably would be diagnosed with autism today. Keep track of them and see how many you already knew or suspected and how many are new or even a person that you don't know of. If these guys were around today, you know what I bet they tell you? They would tell you that you need to be using the internet safely and freely. Do you have a lot of important stuff on your devices and you're worried that someone could hack you? Cause they totally could. Do you keep getting annoying ads and viruses popping up all over the place? Do you want to be able to watch movies that aren't available in your country? You are in need of NordVPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It protects your internet connection and your privacy online. Do you find yourself in coffee shops, at the airport, at school, and you're often using their public Wi-Fi? I hate to tell you, but hackers have many methods to steal your data from public hotspots. But with a VPN, your online traffic is invisible to them. A VPN changes your IP and masks your current location. A VPN encrypts your data, meaning you are minimizing your online footprint. This way, your internet service provider won't be able to sell your entire browsing history to the highest bidder. NordVPN's special threat protection feature will keep your devices safe from common internet hacks 
hazards. Malware, web trackers, and those ads that seem to pop up every time you click on the page. Government agencies, marketers, and network providers would all love to collect and track your browsing history, your messages, and other data. Hide it and protect yourself with NordVPN to encrypt your traffic, hide your IP, and mask your location. With NordVPN, you can access your favorite content from anywhere. You can easily change your location with just one click. Let's say you really want to watch a certain movie, but it's not available in your country. No worries. With NordVPN, you can change your location to a country where that movie is available. You have 60 different countries that you can choose from. And a lot of these countries have lower streaming service prices too. NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the market. So forget buffering, watch without interruption. Possibilities are endless with NordVPN and you can feel confident knowing that your data is protected. And just for you guys, NordVPN has an exclusive deal. Go to nordvpn.com slash page or click the link below in the description to try NordVPN with a 30 day money back guarantee. Big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to the video. Okay, opening up my laptop here. Before we get into this list, I do wanna give not like a disclaimer, but a little disclaimer, I guess. Uh, and that is that most of these people are white people. For a good chunk of humanity, there has been a racial supremacy that we are now trying to dismantle. But unfortunately, most of the systems that make up society are only withheld on top of being racist, like capitalism, like the police force. Most of the famous people that I'm going to talk about on this list were alive in the 1800s. And for a good chunk of them, the reason why they are famous is because they created something new. They are inventors, they are musicians. They are humans with access to a lot of resources, which is disproportionately synonymous with being a white person. And honestly, oftentimes a white male. Not only that, but not a lot of people were writing books and actively publicizing black people during these times. I just wanted you to keep that in mind as I read this very white dominant list. And also keep in mind that even today, it is much harder for people of color to receive an autism diagnosis. Not just ingrained racial prejudice, a lack of resources in certain black communities, a lack of understanding of black humans in general, but specifically a lack of understanding of how the intersectionality of autism and being a person of color changes what autism can look like. So with that being said, let's look at this list. So the first guy I wanna bring up, I'm bringing him up first because he is not dead, he is currently alive, but he is widely accepted to be autistic. And that is Tim Burton. If you guys know Tim Burton, he is the creator of all of these amazing movies. The Nightmare Before Christmas is one of my all time favorite movies ever in the world. He's a very whimsical, very creative, very out of the box thinker already, you can see. But Helena Bonham Carter once speculated that he was possibly autistic in an interview. While she was researching an autistic character for a film. She explains that she kind of had like a, oh my gosh, that is Tim moment while researching. This is a quote from Helena Bonham Carter. Autistic people have application and dedication. You can say something to Tim when he's working and he doesn't hear you, but that quality also makes him a fantastic father. He has an amazing sense of humor and imagination. He sees things other people won't see. As an autistic person, those are definitely autism traits. And I'd be very intrigued to see if Tim Burton cares or will receive an autism diagnosis in the future. Now we've got number two, and this one's a much more heavily recognized, so I'm sure that you will get it. And that is Albert Einstein, the E equals MC squared guy. It is known that Einstein had immense difficulty with social interactions. And although he was highly intelligent, something that we heavily recognize to this day, he had a lot of difficulty in a school setting. He also had a lot of tactile sensitivities and found language with others quite difficult at a lot of times. Number three, that is going to be Emily Dickinson, which if you do not know who Emily Dickinson is, she was a poet in the mid to late 1800s. Her poems were seen extremely unconventional for that time period. She was often quite reclusive. She got along very well and best with children. She also made it a habit to wear almost exclusively white clothing. She also had a few special interests, one of which being scented flowers. And another thing, she had epilepsy. Epilepsy is a pretty common comorbidity with autism. Fourth, and one of my favorites, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. This is why he's one of my favorites. <laughs> Mozart was often bored with humans. He was so particularly bored one time, he was hurtling over a bunch of tables and chairs, meowing like a cat, jumping around and doing somersaults. First of all, all cats are autistic. <laughs> That's a half joke. Um, cats are very 
Yeah. Second of all, I feel you, Mozart. It said that Mozart was unable to carry on an intellectual conversation and also that he existed in a careless and reckless way with frequent and impolite mood changes. I think especially given the time, it would have definitely seemed even more of an impolite thing just to be autistic. Mozart often also repeated facial expressions and almost had constant unintentional motion of his hands and feet. Mozart was a stimmer, he's stimming. His hearing was also incredibly sensitive and it's said that loud noise actually made him physically sick. Mozart's letters also indicated echolalia, which is a very common autistic thing as well. He had a notoriously short attention span and is said that he could fly through a cycle of facial expressions within seconds. My fifth person here is Benjamin Banneker. He was an astrologist and mathematician who helped survey Washington DC. Not only was he a genius in many different fields, but he had such intense fixations on things that that was primarily what led him to do a lot of his experiments. For example, he had a huge fixation on a friend's watch. He had a natural knowledge of mathematics and natural history. Because his parents had been formally enslaved, he had no formal education, so he was largely, for the most part, self-taught. Number six, Sir Isaac Newton himself. Newton was very quiet, very shy, and not very good at the typical small talk and conversations. He was very extremely focused on his work and had a very hard time breaking away from that work. So focused, in fact, that he would often forget to eat. He also was not very good at keeping or making friends. And often he didn't know how to talk to people that he would consider his friends. And this is the trait that definitely solidifies my thing of Newton being autistic. He was very rigid with his routines. For example, if he'd been scheduled to give a lecture at a certain time, he would be giving that lecture no matter if no one showed up. He was doing the lecture. He had it planned, he's doing the lecture. I feel that Newton, I like that. Number seven, Charles Darwin. So Charles Darwin is known as like the father of evolution. He was a very solitary child and grew up to be a very solitary adult. He avoided interacting with others as much as he possibly could and much preferred to correspond via written letters. Rarely would you see him participate in face-to-face -face communication. He also was very, very intrigued with chemistry and different little gadgets. I also think that if you're gonna go to the Galapagos on like just for, you know, I'm gonna go study this breed of bird in this island that's not a very neurotypical uh, adventure or excursion. <laughs> I forget what number we are on. Is it seven? I don't know. Eight, number eight, number eight. Henry Cavendish, who is most famous for discovering hydrogen. A lot of big scientists up in here. I wonder why. This is something that I would do. If I were a famous scientist guy and this was what my life was back in the 1800s, this is something I would do. He was so reclusive that instead of talking to his servants, he would write them a note and leave it on the table. And also he had a complete separate staircase, which a lot of places did. There was a servant staircase and then like the master staircase. But it's said that he primarily wanted this and used it so he could avoid his servants walking through his home. Oh, apparently he built that himself. He built himself a whole separate staircase so he would avoid the housekeeper. Yeah, me too. He also avoided eye contact and was described as being the coldest and most indifferent of mortals. Number nine is Hans Christian Andersen. Hans Christian Andersen. That was too many consonants that were weird. This is the author of The Little Mermaid and The Ugly Duckling, which first and foremost are both stories about being different than everyone else. Another example that people are using to say that there is a good chance that Andersen was autistic is that in his diaries and journals, he often spoke a lot about unrequainted love or having like unobtainable love interests that he was obsessed with. I think that I would need some more information to confirm or deny or feel that within myself. I think that there are a lot of reasons why someone could feel different than everybody and be in love with people that don't love them back rather than just being autistic. But I think that this is widely accepted in the autism community. So I'm not denying, but I need more info. The next one, is it number 10? Lewis Carroll, who is the author of Alice in Wonderland. So for a while, they thought that maybe Lewis Carroll was a, was a, was a, was one of those guys who really liked to talk to little girls. Well, he did like to talk to little girls. Now with this more grander understanding of autism, there is speculation that talking to children was a lot more of a comfortable experience for Carol. Cause it is a big common autism thing to have an easier time communicating with children and animals than adults. He was known to be a very poor communicator. He also had a severe stammer. And so that's what also made communication difficult for him. And not only was he an author, but he was a genius in mathematics and considered himself to be a minor inventor. My next one, what number? Number 11 is also a guy who's alive. And that is Bill Gates, the big old, uh, the big old uh, tech guy, tech guy, big old tech guy. 
Bill Gates. It's said that Bill Gates has a distinct rocking motion that he makes while he's concentrating. He avoids eye contact with others. He has shortened and monotoned speech patterns. And it is also very rare for him to directly speak with someone. Number 12 is Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States, I believe. Hold on, but now when I'm thinking back to Hamilton, wasn't he the second? No. It was, was Aaron Burr the second? Thomas Jefferson's coming home. I don't live in the States, so no one be mad at me for not knowing state things. Also, Thomas Jefferson was an Aries and he also was a slave owner, so doesn't matter that much Thomas Jefferson. Oh, John, John Adams. I know him. That can't be. The Adams administration. Jefferson's the runner up, which makes him the vice president. Thomas Jefferson was quite shy and had a very strong inability to relate to other people. But he was also known for being very eccentric, although being shy. And he had a very big fascination and fixation with constantly rearranging his house. He had difficulties in public speaking and was quite sensitive to loud noises. And he was a little bit of a weirdo. He was known for wearing slippers to important meetings and always had a mockingbird on his left shoulder. What a guy. Number 13, Steve Jobs, the Apple guy, who only died recently. And when I say recently, I think I mean in the last 10 years. <laughs> Even from judging the videos that I've seen of Steve Jobs communicating in public speaking, I related to him for sure. I thought he was autistic already. He's also a genius, is obsessed with perfection. He definitely has unorthodox ways of thinking and is said to have a general lack of empathy when dealing with others. Number 14, I believe, Andy Warhol. Which if you guys don't know Andy Warhol, Warhol. Andy Warhol's an artist. And a lot of his work is based on repetition. Which, who likes repetition? Uh. In interviews, he almost always responded with very short monotone dancers. Very uh, straightforward, to the point. This is what you wanted, here you go. And apparently, he also is reported to have refused wearing anything rather than a certain kind of green underwear. Number 14. I'm so bad with this. The man, the myth, the legend, Michelangelo. The things that we know about Michelangelo and regarding autism are that he was pretty much only focused on his work. Like that was like the one thing that he cared about. And so he was very direct. This one, doing. everyone leaving alone. He had a temper that could change on the drop of a hat, which I think being autistic at those times, I would agree with that. He had very strict routines and poor social skills and also was a genius. Do I think Michelangelo could be autistic? I do think that there's a good possibility. So I do accept that. That is all the ones that I have. But one other one that I really wanted to add was Nikola Tesla. I don't know why I have like this, like love in my heart for Nikola Tesla. But Nikola Tesla is said to be autistic. First of all, being a genius. I don't know if I'm saying that enough or if I'm saying that too much, but like all of these people are geniuses. That doesn't say that like every autistic person is a genius, but it does say most geniuses are autistic people. I wonder why. I don't wonder why. That was a joke. It said that Nikola Tesla suffered from a lot of phobias and they were like quite weird. And he was extremely sensitive to light and sound. He isolated himself willingly voluntarily and the cool thing is he was obsessed with the number three, which is a very good number to be obsessed about if you are to be obsessed with a number. I also like the number three. I like the number three because I also like the number nine. Nikola Tesla. And that is all that I have today. Did you learn something new? Did you learn about a new person that could be autistic? It's been great guys. It's been swell as always sitting here and talking to you about cool things that I find on the internet. What do you think? Do you think that these people you would classify as autistic? Do you relate to them? Because I definitely do given the little information I know about them because I've never met them in real life and I never will. Aww. Anyway guys, that's all I have for you today. So peace out. I will see you later. Take care of yourself. And as always, thank you for being here and thank you for learning. Bye guys. Mwah.